Good morning. Welcome to Zion this morning. We're going to start this morning with any announcements. If you have an announcement to make, if you'll come forward and do that now. Just bringing your attention to next Sunday, the Creation Care Sundays in the bulletin. There's a committee that has been working for over a year to um, come up with a plan for solar panels. So we're gonna have a ceremony at the end of the service. Just please read through that and you'll know what's gonna be happening next Sunday. Hi, just bringing everyone's attention to the um, fun little canvas painting outing here in the church in the bulletin. Um, it is next Sunday from 3 to 5 p.m. And for those of you who aren't really sure kind of what it is, so everyone will get something like this. And so this is a canvas 
and you'll just kind of show up all the supplies will be there and you just bring your own creativity ideas whatever you want to paint and we just have a fun little time hanging out thanks does anyone else here love a good hallmark movie especially this time of the year the holidays yeah sad dramatic romantic <laughs> This morning, Steve will be sharing with us from Hosea. And Hosea, to me, writes a bit like a romance novel or a Hallmark movie. His own story as a prophet instructed by God to marry a prostitute is scandalous enough. But his life serves as an illustration of the scandalous love of God for God's people. Like a Hallmark movie, God is the jilted lover whose heart is broken over the waywardness of his beloved. At one moment, God is angry, and then the next moment, he desperately wants Israel back and wants her to repent. God loves his people and just cannot let them go. Hosea had an important message to deliver. He came to tell people about God's heart. Despite their offensive behavior, despite their unfaithfulness to him, God still cared for them. Though God's heart had been broken, God went on loving them just the same. And I love this imagery and the Corey Ten Boom quote, that there is no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. I'd like you to join with me in the call to worship reading. This is our opportunity to speak out loud together in community to God and to each other as we prepare to worship together. And this one is simple. Uh, those kids out there who can read, the younger ones, I'd love for you to read along with us. It's uh, applicable to all of us. I will be the L for leader, and um, you will be C for congregation, and then we will all end the prayer together. <laughs> that, <laughs> that looks a little different than the one I've got here. But <laughs> So we'll read it up here. <laughs> I will be one and you will be all. God calls us into God's presence with love. God welcomes us as a mother welcomes her beloved children. Let us open our hearts to God's instruction. Let us be comforted in God's loving arms. Mothering God, you love us in spite of ourselves and pick us up when our poor choices get us into trouble. Teach us to follow in your way that we might grow and flourish in all we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please take your blue hymnal. We're gonna sing out of it for a little bit first. Blue hymnal. Number 87, I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing Great is the Lord, number 87.
please turn over to 89 for the beauty of the earth. 89, gonna ask for high voices on verse two and low voices on verse three. voices. may be seated. Oh, that was beautiful. You know, the fall in Oregon is so majestic, and the trees turning, and the beauty around us. God has given us all of these things to remind us of him and his love, and I'm so grateful for grapes, grapes that grow in November that I can go pick and make juice. Craig and I made a hundred quarts of grape juice this weekend, and I'm just grateful. It feels good to do something that's from the earth and something that's gonna provide for me. So what a beautiful hymn. Please take your purple hymnal and turn to 42, your purple hymnal. And I'm gonna have Kristen play through this melody line because it is from an Easter song, I think. I, can I hear the bells ringing or the angels singing? But you're gonna recognize the melody and then we will sing together.
love the words of that song. Please read through that song again today. God is listening. Now is the time that we pray over our tithes and our offering. And as has been pointed out, the last couple of weeks, we have beautiful new offering boxes located at the entrance foyer and here on the wall. Let's take a moment to pray. Lord, thank you for your unfailing love you demonstrate toward us, even when we've been unfaithful. Thank you for the infinite grace you provide for all of us that we need. Receive these gifts we now offer in gratitude for all that you have given us. Use them for the sake of those in need. Amen. And now is the time in our worship that we call the passing of the peace. When we pass the peace, we are expressing the very nature of our community. One that is founded in the love, grace, and peace that God continually extends to all of us. It is not just a time of greeting each other, but it's also a time to offer that same peace and grace that's been lovingly extended to, to us by God to each other and to our neighbors that we worship alongside. So take a moment to pass the peace and really see your neighbors. As you're settling back down, children, you can make your way forward to hear Anne and the children's story this morning. Children, come on up. How's everybody today? Good. I brought a banana up here today. Do you think it's in case I need a snack? No, I want to tell you something funny. So my name is Anne, right? Some of you know that. And ever since I was really little, do you know what some people call me? Anna Banana. Is that silly? I know. Am I a banana? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. And sitting over there is my son, Dylan. And do you know what sometimes people call him? Dill pickle. 
is he a pickle? No. <laughs> and you guys have not met my brother, but I have a brother and his name is Mark. And sometimes people would say, where's your bookmark? <laughs> and so I brought a bookmark. Is my brother Mark a bookmark? That's, you think so? <laughs> Do you guys have any nicknames that people call you? No, not one nickname. What's your nickname? He calls you Levy. Okay, that's a good one. Does anybody else have a funny nickname that their family or friends call them? Yeah? Owen Blowen. <laughs> Sometimes I call Pastor Steve Stevie Weeby. <laughs> what? Okay, what's yours? Yeah? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> we all have funny names, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Did you know, and maybe you knew this, that God knows every single one of your names? Did you know that? Yeah. And God knows the names of all those grown-ups out there too. That's a lot of people. I don't even know everybody's names. And God knows the names of everybody in the world. Is that a lot of names to remember? Yeah. Yeah, even people have the same names and he knows which one is which. That's a very good point. Why do you think God knows everybody's names? Why do you think that is? What? He designed their names? Yeah, yeah. Do you know that you matter so much to God and he cares about you so much that he knows your name and he even knows how much hair is on your head like the number that's how much god cares about you and how much you matter to god yeah so in the bible there's a book of the bible called isaiah and it's like sort of in the middle you can see and isaiah was something called a prophet have you heard the word prophet before at sunday school so prophets were people in mostly the old testament of the bible and their job was to remind people that God loved them and they also reminded people when maybe they were making not so great choices sometimes. So listen to what Isaiah tells the people. This was a long time ago, but it still matters to us. Isaiah says, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, and he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. Even in the Bible, it tells us that God calls our names, and we belong to God. So that's a really good reminder sometimes when maybe we are feeling like sad, or we had a hard day, that God knows, and God knows our names. So for our closing prayer today, we're gonna to do something a little different. So I need everybody to stand up. Stand up. You guys are gonna do the prayer. We're gonna do the closing prayer all together. So you can face out this way so you can see me. So the first thing you guys are gonna do is you're gonna reach both hands up in the air, okay? And on the count of three, we're gonna say something we love about God. So we're gonna go both hands up in the air. One, two, three. What's something you love about God? God knows our names. I love every people. Everybody. Something else that we love about God. Anybody want to shout one out? Okay, we think about that one. Our next one, we're going to reach our hands straight out, and we're going to shout out something in the world we need God's help with. What do we hope God will help us with in the world? Anybody have one? Friends, yes. What? Hate. Yeah, hate, getting rid of hate, and maybe asking for peace in the world. Okay, now look side to side, look at your friends, look at your neighbors, and now shout out the name of one of your friends that you wanna pray for. I heard some names. And now look back here at me and put your hands over your heart like this. 
And this is the time you can either think in your mind or out loud, something that you want to ask God for or something that you want God to know. So we'll take 10 seconds and in your mind, you can think about something you would like to pray to God for. And then we'll say all together in Jesus name, amen. You guys can go back to your seats. Anne. My name is Kara, and I'm pretty sure it was Isaac and Levi, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that like to call me Carrot. <laughs> Our scripture this morning is from Hosea 11, 1 through 9. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. But the more I called Israel, the further they went from me. They sacrificed to Baal, and they burned incense to images. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them in the arms. But they did not realize it was I who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love. I lifted the yoke from their neck and bent down to feed them. Will they not return to Egypt? And will not Assyria rule over them because they refuse to repent? Swords will flash in their cities, will destroy their bars of their gates and put an end to their plans. My people are determined to turn from me. Even if they call me the most high, he will by no means exalt them. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over Israel? How can I treat you like Adma? How can I make you like Zeboam? My heart is changed within me. All my compassion is aroused. I will not carry out my fierce anger, nor will I turn and devastate Ephraim, for I am God and not man, the Holy One among you. I will not come in wrath. Steve. Lord be with you. So what's in a name? It was a big thing back in the 70s and 80s, but I don't see it much anymore. Uh, the trend must have died down, but I'm certain they sold them in Christian bookstores. They probably still do, Christian bookstores and, and probably online someplace. They were these name plaques about this big. Uh, I had them on our walls and they had Bible verses along with the names and the plaques had this official looking yellowed parchment paper mounted to dark wood. It was painted over with clear varnish and the words were black. And then there were these small little red decorative bits in the top corners. Written on them was a first name. It was in bold right at the top. Below that, there was a thick red line, then a descriptive phrase like earnest devotee. And then another thick red line, then a Bible verse. My brother and I, we each had one. His said, David, beloved, followed by 1 John 4, 7, which is, beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that liveth is born of God. I'm pretty sure the King James made it sound more official. Mine read, Stephen, crowned one. I can't remember the Bible verse that went with it. Probably because to me, the important part was the crowned one. <laughs> As a younger brother, I had no problem pointing out how much better that was to my brother's beloved, so wimpy. So this morning's passage from Ho Hi Ho <laughs> This morning's passage is from Hosea. That's from Hosea chapter 11. But Way back at the beginning of Hosea, there's this story about God telling a prophet named Hosea to marry a woman named Gomer. Gomer eventually has three children, and God tells Hosea what to give each of them as a name, because, well, there's something to a name. Gomer had a problem with faithfulness, so 
There was a significant doubt as to whether these were Jose's children or not, but still, they were born of Gomer. The first son was named Jezreel. Jezreel was a place where the Israelites had been massacred for generations before. Gomer's second child, a daughter, was named Lo Ruhama, which means no compassion. Finally, Gomer's third child, another son, was named Lo Ami, which means not my people. Clearly, God's using the names of these poor children to send a not so subtle message to the Israelite people. They had not been faithful to the covenant partnership. They were worshiping other gods and their unfaithfulness would have consequences. But as I've said before, who Israel worships isn't just a matter of, well, who they worship or in their day, who they offer sacrifices to. Their worship had a lot to do with how they viewed life, which God they looked to for guidance, whose ways do they follow? Whose path do they walk in? The worship of ancient peoples like the Israelites characterized their way of life. Who they worshiped brought along with it social, economic, and political structures and habits, behaviors. What was a question is more than just which building they'd go to church to and who they would pray to. The question for the Israelite people has to do with whether or not they would accept God's ways. Would they accept their identity as heirs of God's kingdom? Would they live in partnership with God or would they continue to take up the chains of captivity that came with worshiping these other gods? Leading up to Hosea chapter 11, the passage that Kara read for us this morning, it's it's a description of the continued patterns of unfaithfulness of the Israelite people, their worship of other gods. They continue to ignore God's invitation to restore the covenant partnership. Along with Gomer's second son, the Israelite people have adopted the name, have become the name Lo Ami, not my people because they continue to reject God and they continue to reject God's ways. But here in Hosea 11, God recalls a time when they were named something different. God recalls a time when God called them my son. And with that title, God gave them all the riches of the inheritance that came with being a child of God. The name of child of God, it's contrasted with their life of slavery in Egypt under the thumb of Pharaoh, who was viewed as another God with another God's ways. But the people had been called out of captivity in Egypt by Yahweh, the God of the covenant partnership. God had given them their freedom and because of God's desire for partnership, they had become heirs of God's kingdom, children of God. Instead of the chains of captivity in Egypt, they experienced God's loving kindness. The passage says, I led them with bands of human kindness, with cords of love. I treated them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and I fed them. While the Israelites continued to turn away from God, God mourns the sadness of the events that have resulted from their unfaithfulness. The Israelites took up the name, not my people. Yet that same God continues relentlessly to pursue them. God's words are, how can I give you up? How can I hand you over? My heart winces within me. My compassion grows, grows warm and tender. Even with their turning away, God keeps coming and coming and coming. It's like a Rick Ashley song that will never go away. 
God's relationship with Israel is like a loving parent who feels deep pain at their child's disobedient, harmful, and destructive behavior. So God reminds them that they are still heirs of God's kingdom, reminds them of their name, even when they don't live like it. They can still take up the name child of God by walking in God's ways. In the midst of their continued rejection of God, God relentlessly pursues them, and this is the love of God. There are times when the picture we get of God in the Old Testament seems difficult to reconcile with what we see of Jesus in the New Testament. There are sometimes descriptions of wrath and judgment that Old Testament writers ascribe to God, and at times, honestly, I'm confused and troubled by passages that, uh, in my limited understanding and perspective, they don't seem to be consistent with the good news of the kingdom of God that Jesus proclaimed. But that's not the case here in this passage from Hosea. In Hosea chapter 11, verses 1 through 9, we get a portrayal of God that is entirely consistent with Jesus. In the New Testament, there's a kind of parallel passage. Mark chapter 10, there's an interaction and it goes like this. People were bringing children to Jesus so that he would bless them, but the disciples scolded them. Why did they scold them? Well, it doesn't say. Maybe some thought the kids were too loud and it was difficult to pay attention. Maybe there was too much running. Maybe the children didn't have a long enough attention span. It doesn't say why, but the disciples scolded those who brought their children to Jesus. When Jesus saw this, says, he grew angry and said to them, allow the children to come to me. Don't forbid them, because God's kingdom belongs to people like these children. I assure you that whoever doesn't welcome God's kingdom like a child will never enter it. Then he hugged the children and blessed them. God is painted much the same way in Mark 10 as in Hosea 11. And in that consistency lies a promise for us. God will always lead with love. For rebellious children and obedient children alike, God advocates. For the fussy and the gentle children, the boisterous and the silent children, God wants only good things. God extends invitations to the rebellious, the innocent, and everybody in between. God exudes compassion where we might judge and tenderness where we might be tempted to go cold. Well, I grew up in a time with name plaques on the wall. The choice was really mine whether or not to live into the name. That was the choice for the Israelite people. Would they continue to choose the name Lo Ami, not my people? Or would they accept the name of simply Ami, my people, a name that they had been given by God? Which name would they accept and live into? Even with their continued turning away, God names them as heirs of the kingdom. God continually and relentlessly calls them back to their true identity as children of God and as heirs of the kingdom. So, in these passages from Hosea and Mark, we learn about God. In the midst of rebellion, God relentlessly pursues love. It's a love free from contingencies and expectations. It's a love that overcomes obstacles. It's a love that can balance disappointment and hurt and confusion without wanting to seek vengeance. God's love is all at once preemptive and reactive, which means that it doesn't really have an identifiable beginning or end. It always has been pursuing us. It's pursuing us right now, and it always will be pursuing us. That's what we learn about God.
And we also learn about us, that God has given us the freedom to accept a name. Will we receive the name child of God or will we take up the chains that bind us to our own strivings, our own abilities and our own failures? The good news of God's kingdom is that we have been named children of God. Through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, we have been freed from the law. You have been freed. You are heirs of God's kingdom. That is the name God has given you, the name God has given us. Whether we will receive it remains up to us. Even more, as partners with God, as heirs of God's kingdom, we have the opportunity to call out each other's names as well. In a moment of mistaken priorities, the disciples scolded some who were seeking a blessing from Jesus, and Jesus corrected them. It was one of the very few times that the Bible says Jesus got angry. Are there ways we become like the scolding disciples? Times when even with our best intentions, we keep others from the blessings of God's kingdom. In our desire to uphold social conventions or keep the institution of the church, what barriers have we constructed that Jesus is challenging or even growing angry about? I guarantee there are some. In addition to being named children of God, we have been invited to call out and proclaim the names of others. Whenever we proclaim names of justice for others, proclaim names of freedom from captivity, freedom from alienation, names of God's unconditional love, names of inclusion and belonging, we proclaim God's kingdom here on earth. May we be a people that not only accept the name God has given us, but actively work to proclaim that everyone is a child of God as well. Please take your purple hymnals and turn to 767. Purple hymnals, 767. Please turn to number 43. This is going to be our Prayers of the People song today, number 43. As Jenna and I were thinking about the service and thinking about this part uh, and this response and this Prayers of the People, 
was times where uh, I was thinking about uh, how we could add some prayers between the verses or things like that. And it just became clear reading the words that and anything I had to offer um, uh, was going to be a, a sad comparison to the text, the words that are already there. Uh, there's a phrase that says, the one who sings prays twice, because there's not only the lyrics, but there's also uh, the musical and artful uh, language of prayer. So as we pray and enter into the prayers of the people in this time, I want to invite you and us to pray twice together. We're going to just sing Lou first through the song so you're familiar with the melody line, then we'll sing the words. Lou, Lou, Lou. Go in peace, loving and caring generously for each other. Go in the confidence of people who have found mercy through God. 